Hi, Ellie. How are you? Uh, listen, I wanted to make uh, a video answer for you because uh, with this uh, solution requires graphics, and graphics is not really available on a regular just an answer board. So I made this video for you and explain the solution. Okay? So uh, your problem says that uh, you have a plane that is flying due south, okay, and flying at a speed of uh, minus of 200 miles per hour. So this plane here is moving south. So on the Cartesian system of coordinates, due south is in the minus j direction and due north in the positive j direction. And this is east, and this is west, and due east is the positive i direction, and due west is in the negative i direction. Okay? So I just want to explain that from the beginning so it will be clear. Okay? So, so that plane uh, has a vector a, the speed of the plane, and that vector A can be represented by minus 200 J mile per hour. MPH is mile per hour, okay? So basically, if we are to draw this here, and I'm not drawing this to scale, I'm just drawing it to sh show you the vector, how it's represented, okay? So I'm gonna change my color here, I'm gonna put uh, this kind of color. So that vector for the plane when it was flying in the beginning is this vector here. I'm going to put a arrow on its top indicating its sense. It's moving in the south direction. And it is written as like this. A, vector A equal minus 200J. Okay. Now, when it was flying, a wind hits it. The wind hits it, and it created a new position for that vector, which is vector B, which is uh, given to you as 40i minus 170j. Okay? So... First thing we have to do is sketch that vector on this system here, so we can show the vector, okay? So let's choose also a different color here. Let's choose magenta, uh, maybe green, green, okay? So if we are to sketch this vector, I can put this vector right here, and it's at 170, so each one of those ticks is going to be 40. So you got 40, 80, 120, 160, and 200 here. Okay. So 170 is somewhere here, I'm going to say, like this. And the vector is drawn as so, up to this point. Okay. So that is what? The J component of the resulting vector B, which minus 170J, which is due south to the point of 170. So the magnitude here is 170. J negative. It also has an I component of 40I. So I'm going to draw that also in green. So this is I component. It's a positive 40I. Therefore, this is a vector and has a component of plus 40I in the positive I direction. So the plane was moving 
south with vector A, the wind hits it, the resulting vector is given to you in components, we need to find the resultant of that vector. So basically, if you join, complete the square here, or the, sorry, complete the rectangle, and I say rectangle, not a parallelogram, because the X and Y components of the vector are perpendicular to each other, okay? So, which means if I complete this, I'm gonna get the resultant vector here, that. That's the resultant vector to B, okay, RB. So I can write that here as RB equal to what? Well, this is what? This is this is a right angle triangle, okay? 90 degrees here. Therefore, RB is a hypotenuse of a right angle triangle. So RB is going to be the square root of this component square plus this component square. So it will be square root of 40 I squared plus minus 170 J squared. And because we're finding the magnitude, this will be that, and I got 70, oh. I guess, let me calculation quickly here. I did it before, but I wanna make sure it's correct. So you got 40 squared plus 170 squared. I got 174.6, what, mile per hour, MPH, okay, mile per hour. So this is the direction of the plane, RB, after the wind hits the plane, which was flying due south, okay? So the plane was flying due south. Some wind hits it. I do not know what the direction of the wind is. I'm just assuming it is like that. And it moved the plane up to this position vector. Okay? So, what I need to find now is this angle here. This is angle theta. Okay? Well, angle theta, because this is a right angle triangle, is nothing but the tangent inverse. I'm sure you've seen this before. What? The opposite, which is this, over the adjacent, which is that. So the opposite is minus 170 divided by the adjacent, which is 40. So if you do that also, calculating minus 170 over 40, you're gonna get minus 76.8 degrees, okay? Why the negative? Well, the negative is because as you rotate in a trigonometric circle, as you rotate clockwise, it's a negative. And when you rotate counterclockwise, and that's a convention, that we all use is a positive. So to get from this axis, x axis, to where that position vector RB is, when that vector RB is, is a rotation of uh, clockwise, and that's where you get the negative value. Magnitude of theta is 76.8 degrees. Okay, so now we determined half of the problem, which is finding the position of the resulting vector finding its resultant and its position. So the theta finds the position of the vector on the system and 
the RB finds the resultant of the vector in magnitude. So magnitude, position. Okay. So the second part of the problem is he wants to to find the vector W, which is the wind vector that hit the plane and caused it to come to vector B. Okay. So, so what, what, how did vector B happen? Well, vector B is a result of sum of vector A, which is a plane heading south, plus the wind, which we do not know yet, but we want to, to, to determine that, okay? So, if you do some algebra, what W equal vector B, minus vector A. And we can add components in both vectors and find a new vector W. Okay, so vector D B is 40i minus 170j and vector A is minus 200j. So it's minus here, minus that minus minus 200 J. So that's going to give you 40 I minus 170 plus 200 is plus 30 J. And that is your vector W. I'm going to sketch that here. So I'm going to use a different color. Let's use magenta this time. This will be the vector right here. It's always got a 40i component, doesn't change. Okay. And it got a 30j. So it's somewhere here, I'm going to say. And notice it says positive 30j. So this will be the vector right here. Okay. So this is. 30 J and this is 40 I I'm sure I already have it here but I want to draw it in the same color so you can see it okay so now what happens is I want to find the resultant vector of vector W in its components so if I complete again the square like this okay the resultant vector is come from the origin to the point of intersection of the two extensions right there, like this. And that will be W, uh, RW, which is the resultant of vector W, okay? RW. And this will be the angle that we need to find to find the position of vector vector rw okay so i'm gonna draw this in a bigger uh, i'm gonna add a board here i'm gonna draw this sometimes adding board doesn't really work i'm gonna make it bigger here so you can see it okay so I'm gonna draw it here. That's 30. That's 40. Uh, let's complete this parallel. Uh, this, uh, like you, I said before, uh, because the two vectors are perpendicular to each other, okay. Then you complete a square or a rectangle. Okay. So this is your resultant vector and that is your resultant vector r of w resultant of w this is 30 and this is 40 this is 30j okay and this is 40i so if i want to find the position of this vector i measure from the 
always measure from the x-axis okay i measure what positive in the counterclockwise direction and find this angle theta okay so before let's just find the magnitude of w so the magnitude of w let me change the color back to black the magnitude of w i'm going to put it right down here w equal to that's a magnitude square root of what this hypotenuse squared which is a w sorry that's rw will be square root of this plus that right so square root of 40 squared plus 30 squared and if you do the calculation for that you're going to get 50 mile per hour. What this means that the resultant of the wind vector is 50 mile per hour, its magnitude, and it's in this direction, which we're going to find its position by finding the angle theta. So now we can find the angle theta here, which is tangent inverse theta equal to tangent inverse of what this over that opposite over adjacent the opposite is 30 and the adjacent is 40 so these two zeros cancel out you get tangent inverse 3 over 4 that's how we get second f looking at my calculator here 3 over 4 I got 36.9 degrees. So this theta here is equal to 36.9 degrees. Rotating what? Rotating counterclockwise from the horizontal. Counterclockwise. Okay, that's counterclockwise from the horizontal, like that. Okay? But are we done? No, because he wants to find the position of the vector, of the uh, resultant vector of the wind with respect to the south direction. So to do that, it's very easy. All you have to do is extend this line down. Let me use the same color I used for the vector, which is magenta. If I extend this line down like this, right? So in geometry, this is this angle and this angle are equal opposite angles right these two angles are equal so this angle is actually 36.9 degrees but if you do the principle of transmissibility and bring the arrow down to here okay this will be the angle that the wind vector <clears throat> makes with the south direction. This is the south direction. <clears throat> this will be the angle. So the angle actually, I call that angle alpha, is what? 90 degrees <clears throat> minus 36.9. And that gives you what? 90 minus 36.9. 53.1 degrees. So that angle alpha, that the uh, wind vector makes with the south direction is 53.1 degree. This this it's. And how did I get it? Well, this is 90 degree minus 36.9. I got this. And how do we explain this? We're, we're working with position from the south vector so if we start from the south end and we rotate what counterclockwise right from the south end so uh, sorry we rotate clockwise so it will be uh, negative value right so it will be minus 53.1 degree from 
south direction. Okay. Is there any other way I can explain this? Yeah, I can do uh, plus 53.1 degree from vector to south direction. From uh, wind vector to south axis, okay? From wind vector, it's whatever way you want to do it, okay? From wind vector to south direction. Now, whichever way you want to choose, I think the best way to choose is this, the negative part of it, because it rotates like this, rotating in the uh, negative clockwise direction. And that will define, and that defines the position of your uh, vector, uh, wind vector RW, which is right here. Well, I hope that uh, answered all your questions about this problem. If you need other help, uh, just look me up on Wise and and uh, let me know what you need. Take care.